In a moment's time, I'm going to show you the clip of Megan Fox talking about her hell experience. But before I do that, over to you. I want to hear from you right now. Write in the comment box either yes or no. Do you think that Megan Fox really went to hell? And one more thing, if you are new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. You can always unsubscribe at the end of the video if you think what I've said is a load of nonsense. We, um... Colson and I went to Costa Rica together to do like a really deep. And, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but Colson is Machine Gun Kelly. Y'all call him Machine Gun Kelly. Yeah. But at the crib, she's not, you want a I bottle was... of water, Machine Gun? <laughs> yes, Colson. Um, <laughs> so we went to we went to Costa Rica to do ayahuasca like in a proper setting, like with indigenous people and we were in the middle of the jungle, and I was thinking because the place we went, there's a lot of people like, I don't know if LeBron James has ever gone, but it's like a place where like, they're like, these kinds of people go here to do ayahuasca. So I was thinking it was like glamping or something like that, it's still gonna be like a some kind of five-star experience. And you get there and you really are in the middle of the jungle and you don't get to eat after like 1 p.m. You have to walk a very far distance to get your water. You can't shower because they're in a drought, so you can't use the water, obviously. Like, you need to respect the rainforest. Um, nothing glamorous about it. It's all a part of sort of making you vulnerable so that you surrender to the experience. And the entire thing starts with something called vomitivo. I hope I'm allowed to divulge this, that it's okay that I share, but I'm encouraging it. Um, so you go, and we were with 20 other strangers, and you all line up at like the, the edge of the rainforest over this weird fence and you go three by three and you drink lemongrass tea until you like by n not your own volition just vomit everything out of your body. So you start- So you have to vomit, there's no way around that You can't that get out of it and you have to vomit a certain amount before they let you get back with everybody. So you're like cheering on everyone as they like throw up. And as like what we do, obviously, we were like, oh, I don't know, I'm not, am I ready to just like throw up in front of all of these people? But it's such a good bonding experience. And <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but but that gets you ready to then go into the ceremony that night because you're like, I my vanity is gone. I've just done this in front of all of these strangers. I'm like, now I'm ready to like really open up. So we did it for three nights. It was incredibly intense. I went to, everybody's journey is different. The second night I went to, to hell for eternity. Um, yeah. And to just knowing eternity is um, like t torture in itself because there was no beginning, middle or end. So you have like a real ego death. Wait, wait, now, now how do you arrive and understand that that's what the moment is? Because is there a sign next exit hell? Is it, I, <laughs> I mean, it's I, I was it's your own psychological hell basically is the point of the medicine, right? This is a medicine that goes, it surpasses like anything you could do with talk therapy or like hypnotherapy or any of those things. It just goes straight into your soul and it takes you to the psychological prison that you hold yourself in. So it's it's your own version of hell. And I was definitely there. Wow, it, it, it's it's crazy to have that experience and go to hell. Now, before I give you my verdict on what I think, did Megan Fox really go to hell or did she not? Let me first just tell you a rather terrifying story of what some people might call a hell testimony. One of the greatest tragedies that has ever happened in the world of sports is the Hillsborough disaster. If you've never heard of the Hillsborough disaster, one day a football game, a soccer game, was happening between Liverpool Football Club and Nottingham Football Club at a place called Hillsborough in Sheffield, England. And what happened was there was a great flooding of fans that were let into the stadium. Far too many fans were let into the stadium to the point where there was a huge human crush and fans just kept pouring through and people were dying. In fact, that day, 96 precious souls were killed and 766 people were terribly injured. And one of those men who was inside of that crush was a man called Bobby. Now, what you need to know about Bobby, first of all, that's not his real name, but for the sake of this story, let's call him Bobby. Bobby wasn't anti-Christian, but he certainly wasn't searching after the things of God at all and wasn't interested. And when Bobby was in that crush, he could see people dying. He said he saw a child in front of his own eyes and the life just went from him. And Bobby knew he was about to die. And as the crush just kept getting tighter and tighter, he could feel himself suffocating. And he said as he felt like he was dying, he could feel a certain heat in his feet. He could feel sort of flames burning in his feet. And he felt like he was sinking further and further into the earth. 
And then as he went further and further down, he could hear screams, shrieks, people crying out the most horrible, ear-piercing screams he's never heard before. And just as he thought it was over, that he was going to go to hell, he heard a voice say this, Call out to me. Call out to me. And Bobby said this, Lord God, if you are real, save me. And literally the second that Bobby called out to God, the crowd went back a couple of inches and Bobby had chance to take a breath and move himself out into safety. And then the story does have a happy ending. Right now, Bobby is an elder of a church. He preaches the gospel and he got wonderfully saved where he gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who died on a cross for sinners. And there are many other people in the world who have had similar experiences where they sort of felt a glimpse of hell and it shook them up so much that they turned to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, I need a savior because I do not want to go to this place called hell. But the question you and I need to ask ourselves is this, did Megan Fox really go to hell? Well personally, I don't think she did. I mean she herself when she was pressed on the matter said well no it was more of a psychological experience and the truth is this, if a person goes to hell for eternity there's no coming back. There are no fire exits in hell. The Bible puts it like this, and besides all this, between us and you, there is a great goal fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. So in other words, there is this great big chasm. There is this great everlasting pit that not even Spider-Man can climb out of. No one can escape hell once they're in there. But on the flip side, however, the wonderful truth is this. If you're safe on the shore, of heaven, you can't enter into hell either. Now I know some of you have only clicked on this video because you've seen the name Megan Fox, but I'll tell you something, there's something that terrifies me more than anything and it's this, some of you watching this video right now are going to hell and you will never ever get out. I believe the most terrifying word in the whole of the Bible is this word, remember. There was a man, and it's recorded in the Bible, he's trapped in hell, and he cries out to Abraham, he says, please, it's so hot here, will you just put one drop, one drop of water on my tongue to cool it down? And the man's response is this, remember. You see, there will be no memory loss in hell. In hell, you remember watching this video. In hell, you remember every time you walk past a street preacher who pleaded with you to come to the gentle saviour who died for sinners. You remember every time you laughed at Christians. You remember every time you ignored the Bible. You ignored God's book, the Word of God, and said, I don't want anything to do with Christianity. You remember every time you drove past a church when the doors were wide open and you were welcomed in and you said, no thanks, I don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ, you will never ever forget all those opportunities you had to repent and for the rest of eternity that will gnaw at your conscience over and over again. And this man, he actually prayed in hell. Did you know that there are people who pray in hell but nobody answers? Did you know there is a day when mercy is forever cut off? And my dear friends, some of you, you haven't got long left. Is there anyone who's listening to my voice today who can guarantee to me that you'll be here next year? Is there anyone who can hear my voice right now who can guarantee to me that you'll be here next month? Is there anyone who can hear my voice right now this very second who can guarantee to me tomorrow you will wake up and you will have another day, you will have breath in your lungs again? You can't, can you? So every single one of us would be wise to turn to the gentle saviour, to the one who endured hell on the cross. He took all of your lies, all of your blasphemy, all of your sex outside of marriage, all of your drunkenness, and on the cross, God poured out all of his wrath on the innocent one, Jesus Christ, and punished him and crushed him for your sins. So that any man, any woman who will humble themselves and cry out to God to save them, to have mercy on them, just like Bobby said, Lord God, save me. If there's anyone who is willing to do that today, you can know forgiveness of sins and you can know that you have a place in heaven and you are certainly not going to that place called hell. I plead with you today, come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've never had a glimpse of hell, 
Don't wait around to try and see if it really be true. Do not test the Lord thy God. No, you come today and you find out the forgiveness of sins, the hope that is in the risen Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who beat the grave and can give you eternal life. Now, just before we finish, I am going to pray for Megan Fox right now, and I'd encourage you also to pray for Megan, that she will come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we come before you now and we lift up Megan Fox before you. We know she is one of the most famous women in the world. We know that many men would see her as the most beautiful woman in the world. She has fame, talent, money, success, beauty. She has everything that this world could ever want. But we know that Jesus once said this, what shall it profit a man or a woman if they gain the whole world but loses their only soul? And I know, Lord, that there is nothing more precious than the human soul. So I plead with you, Lord, that you would save Megan Fox, that something of this experience that she had would make her search into the things of God, read the Bible, and find out that there is a saviour who can rescue any repentant sinner from hell. And gracious God, I pray for anyone else listening right now who might be going to hell. Lord, open their eyes. Let them stop whatever they're doing right now and turn to you and ask you, O oh God, to save them and to rescue them from hell and to give them eternal life through the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray all of these things in his name. Amen. Now, if you are a Christian already and you want to get a general idea for how many people are going to hell, please watch this video right now. And once again, if you haven't yet subscribed to this ministry and you find it helpful to hear about the Bible and the things of God, please do consider subscribing. God bless you all and thank you for watching.